Hey everybody, let's look at the rule 8102 in the electrical code book for Canada. Now it's talking about the voltage drop in each circuit. And 8102 tells us, part of it tells us that we cannot exceed 3% voltage drop in a feeder or a branch circuit. Or overall, we can't exceed 5% all the way from where the supply comes into the building out to the point of utilization, say out to a receptacle or a load. What does that exactly mean? Well, let's say we had a 120 volt supply. The maximum amount of voltage that we would be able to drop in the lines getting out to the load would be 3%. So 120 times 0 0.03 gives me a maximum of 3.6 volts drop. That means at the load, we would end up getting a minimum of 116.4 volts supplied to the load. Now this is really important because if this number gets too low, we can end up with all kinds of challenges at our load in that our load will not operate correctly. If it's a motor, it could overheat and burn out. So we really want to make sure that we don't um, get a lower voltage than is allowed. Now to help us calculate this out, um, 8102 sends us to Appendix B and also Table D3. In table D3, if you notice these values are written down here, um, 1%, 120 volts, single phase, and copper. Now these are the parameters that Table D3 were, were designed and built around. And so sometimes we'll end up with adjusting for this, these numbers. For example, if we're in a branch circuit, and we're looking for a maximum of 3%, and the table was built for 1%, we're gonna replace the part of the, the formula with 3% instead of 1%. If the voltage of the circuit that we're actually trying to figure out the voltage drop in is more than 120 volts, we're gonna to have to adjust this formula to match the voltage in our actual circuit. This table is used for single phase. There is another video that I've posted to this YouTube channel that talks about what we would do if it was a three-phase circuit. Also note that this formula is designed for copper and if we want to find out the voltage drop for an aluminum conductor we would go to sub rule 5 in appendix D um, and it will tell us that we have to go up a couple sizes uh, make our, our aluminum wire two sizes larger than our copper wire for the same amount of voltage drop. The main formula that we use is the distance, or yeah, D for distance in meters. And this is going to be the maximum distance that we can take that wire without exceeding the voltage drop. Table D3. Um, in table D3 are what I call the basic meters. So the basic distance that you could go with a certain size AWG. And we're going to adjust that using this formula, but we have to put the basic meters in here from the table. Now the voltage drop, as I mentioned, if we're using a 3% drop maximum because we're running a feeder or branch circuit, then we're adjusting this formula from 1% to 3%. So I'm going to end up putting my 3% in there. The DCF stands for distance correction factor. And what that means is sometimes we're not fully, fully utilizing the capability of that wire. And this gives us a little tiny bit of adjustment. It's typically around the number one. So a little bit less than one or a little bit more than one. And the last part here is our adjustment because the table was originally designed for 120 volts. And if we have a a different voltage, we're going to divide that voltage by 120 to adjust our formula into 120. So again, if we're looking just at this formula, the distance in meters equals the distance from the table in meters times the voltage drop that we're allowed times the distance correction factor times our actual circuit voltage divided by 120. Now the distance correction factor, 
Uh, well, there's a few things to look at here. The distance, maximum distance in meters, is a one-way distance. So we know that we have a um, two wires typically going out to a load in single phase. And what we end up with is a hot going out and a return coming back. Our distance, total distance, is a one-way distance out to the point of utilization uh, if it's a branch circuit. The table D is distance in meters. As I mentioned, it's that table was originally designed 1%, 120 volts, single phase in copper. The voltage drop is, is in percent. So we don't change that to a decimal value. We leave that in percent. So if it's 3%, we just put the number three in this, in this calculation, not decimal zero three. And the distance correction factor is found this way. We take the load amperage, um, divided by the capability of the wire that we're using, so the wire amperage, multiply that by 100, and we get a percentage. We're going to then take that percentage to the DCF table and look up the value that we would put in our formula up here for DCF. And the last piece was the circuit voltage, the actual circuit voltage, divided by 120. So let's look at an example. So finding, here's our example, a 127, sorry, a 27 amp, 240 volt load is fed with a number eight AWG copper NMD90 Lumex. And we want to find the maximum distance that this load can be located from the panel. We start with our formula, distance e equals table D3 meters times the voltage drop times the distance correction factor times something over 120. Let's fill this in. So to find the distance from table D3, what we do is we know that we were given a 27 amp load. So running down the left-hand side of table 23, I want to go to a number that's larger than 27. So my first choice is 32. And it told me that I was going to be using a number eight conductor. And if you look up here, my number eight conductor matches up with my 32 amp load. And this number here, the 7.7, .7 is now what we call the, uh, the meters one way that we're allowed to go, and it's our basic number from table D3. So remember 7.7, .7, and that's what I put in here from table D3, 7.7. .7. My voltage drop, because this is a load fed from a breaker, it is a branch circuit. So the most I can do is 3%, so I put three in there. Now I have to go and look up my distance correction factor. And so what we're going to do is take this little formula right here. And my distance correction factor is found by taking the 27 amps, which is my actual load amps. And then I go to table two and I look up how many amps can a number eight wire carry. And if you remember in the question, it said NMD 90. That 90 stands for the degree. And we actually, for voltage drop questions, take the actual degrees of the capability of the wire. So in table two, we're going to look in the 90 degree column and we get 55 amps. Now notice that our load is 27 amps and the wire is capable of carrying 55 amps. That's much greater than we would normally use. But the, but the reason we're using a large wire is that we're going to go a long ways. And so some of this current um, capability, what we're trying to do is reduce the resistance and reduce our, our voltage drop so that we can meet the requirements of the code rule. So to, to find the DCF, we take the 27 amps of our load divided by the 55 amps of our wire, and we get 0.49. Multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. It's that percentage that we're going to take 
to the DCF table. Now notice that I've rounded up here. So there isn't an exact place in the DCF table for 49%. So we round up. And I've said we get 0 0.0106. And I'll show you that in the table. And so what we end up here is now it tells us right here in the DCF table to use the rated opacity of the conductor. So it was a 90 degree conductor and our calculation worked out to be 50%. This, this row here is percentages. So 50% at 90 degree conductor is 1.06. So remember for this table, it tells us to use the insulation temperature of the wire and we have to round up and in here are our percentages don't forget that it would have been nice just to have these little percent signs here because often students make the mistake of just um, trying to put the percentage in to our calculation instead of going to the dcf table and taking that percentage and finding a number in there so we'll just go back to this So now I had the 1.06, which I found with my distance correction factor. I'm going to the table. And the last piece was I was given 240 volts as my supply. I divide that by 120 to adjust this formula. And when I multiply all this out, I end up with 48.97 meters is the maximum distance that I could use a number eight copper conductor to feed this 27 amp load. I hope that's helpful and um, join me for some more videos in the future.